different types of decks I love to see. Stuff that that, that draws fast and hit uh, and hits hard for sure. This top four screams one word to me, young. We have young, talented players <laughs> here in top four, probably younger than even I am, and I would consider myself young. But let's talk about our two players here in top four. We've seen them on stream before. Rowan Savanau, a longtime player of the Pokemon trading card game, world champion in the junior division in 2015, top four in seniors 2019, and two top eight appearances after we returned to play back in 2020. And it's been with this Mew VMAX deck, the tried and true, whether it's double turbo energy, fusion strike energy, and whatnot, centering around Mew VMAX, and of course, Genesec with that fusion strike system, detective last attack. Of course, of course, of course. But talking about young players who masters deck, uh, masters some decks, uh, Regan Reslov with the Lugia V-Star. This is something he's been playing a lot of lately. He, he, he was actually the finalist from the 2023 Portland Regional, something just a couple of weeks ago. Get, did get to talk to him during that event. He was absolutely amazing. He's a 2023 OCIC finalist, top eight in the Orlando Regional 2023, and LAIC top 32. Quite the season here for Reagan. And again, he has mastered. He is one of the best Lugia players, in my opinion. Again, just being able to make it here to the top eight multiple times. It's I'm very excited to see this match. I think pretty convincingly, I think if we had to cut the season off here, Reagan is the rookie of the year. First year master, keep that in mind. Keeping it up with the biggest and the best in the game. Fusion, Fusion Mew VMAX versus Lugia. We've seen these decks for a little while, of course, Mew longer than Lugia, but nevertheless, seems like these decks have been thrown in our faces. Mm. We've been forced to watch them function, watch them play, and of course, watch the decks evolve. Looking into this matchup, are there any key cards you're looking for as we take a look at the prize cards, especially, that matter in this matchup? Well, a couple, Mew VMAX, that's for sure. While we, uh, while we see two of them prized right there, that's a very important attacker because that is your main attacker. But something very, very important here is, of course, going to be uh, Reagan's worst nightmare, Path and Judge. Those two, that combination of cards did cost Reagan the Portland Regional Championship because, again, when you're playing Lugia V-Star, you have so many bricks early on in your uh, in your in your deck, right? You have 20, uh, 16 energy, give or take, and four Archeops, and you know when you're judged down to four and you're trying to get those combo pieces, it could be tough. Here we are, top four here at Hartford. Let's get things underway. Rowan Stavana up against Reagan Retzloff, and Reagan with a big advantage going first, but just an attachment and pass, no Lugia down turn one. You hate to see it again. You don't need that much turn one. Ideally, you get the Arc Ultra Ball double Archeops into Lugia. Everyone loves to see that, but right now, just an energy attachment. Let's see if Rowan can respond here. Looks like Cramomatic into an escape rope. Might not have a, a strong start as well. Seems like both players are struggling a little bit here. Oh. Having to attach for a seal stone, you usually see that on Genesec, but forced to put that onto the Mew V. Star Alchemy being used, searching out any Pokemon card, trainer card, energy, any card out of the deck. And you see already being queued to the top. Battle VIP past the selection can start to get these Pokemon into play. Yes, again, sometimes that uh, the Forest Seal Stone just acts as your fifth or sixth Battle VIP pass because there's no better card to draw in the very first turn than the Battle VIP pass, getting two more Pokemon in play, especially Mew VMAX, when you need multiple Pokemon to be able to draw cards with the Fusion Strike system on the Genesec. Looks like we are going to get at least one of those. Rowan here going to be at finally, uh, he's going to be able to check their deck, realize there's only one Mew VMAX. Let's see what else they play here. I keep getting flashbacks to the first game we played, and I have this <laughs> looming thought in my head of, what if Rowan just hits everything this turn? Of course, <laughs> if it is turn one, Rowan is going second. We could see something like a fusion strike system drawing into a bunch of cards. And you saw Rowan considering grabbing that Meloetta to utilize this Alessa Sparkle in hand to put energies on. Instead, understands Reagan did not put a Lugia down. He will not be dealing more than, I guess, Kragalange with a double turbo energy can deal 120 damage next turn with weakness. But that's it. Here we go. Fusion Strike System. One card. Oh, it's a Genesec. That means Fusion System can be used again for two cards here with Fusion System. Oh, did something happen? Looks like, uh, looks like the Rowan did draw a card there oh. while... Still having three cards again, you can up draw up to the amount of Fusion Strike Pokemon. So uh, quick judge call there. Very unfortunate no. to see. But you know what, Ethan, I just want to talk about that real quick. You know, I was looking at this matchup and 
In my mind, I was thinking, okay, you know what? E Reagan should have at least a turn, but I totally <laughs> forgot for a second that this is the Meloetta version, which has the capability to take knockouts on the very first turn. So Rowan actually had the... Re it was a real possibility for Rowan to win right here, right now. So unfortunate, too. The next card being Genocide to one, but, but number two is, as you see, Rowan progressing here. Like, he had the switch in hand to burn the card to fill up this Genocide system, but just instinctively forgot to play it, and this is going to make a pretty big difference here. Putting this prize penalty aside, right? You're only getting one card off this Fusion Strike system. And it might be different, you know? The, they did have to shuffle the, de the deck. That means it's oh not God. the Genesect. God. Looks like we are going for an energy mix. An attack I haven't been able to say in a minute, despite Mew being in the meta. Again, able to attach an energy from the deck. And looks like just grabbing one more Fusion Strike energy. Yeah, we've been seeing no energy mix now that the double turbo Mew version has been so popular. You don't play any psychic energy in your deck, so can't really utilize that attack unless you're copying. And, and usually if you're copying that attack, Things aren't going your way. What is in the hand here for Reagan? Reagan has a research. That means there is a way, but there is a lot. That's a lot of resources, but one of the things discarded is going to be that Arcaps. That's where we'd like to see it. Uh, let's see if they can draw to at least, they need at least two Lugias here, I think, just to be a little safe. Uh, Tails does mean you do get one Lugia there. You see updated there, prize counter Reagan will need to take two fewer prizes to win this game. And I mean, we keep mentioning it here, but if there's any place you really don't want to make a mistake, it's top eight. And usually this would be such a big advantage in this matchup, but uh, the fact that Reagan essentially started to turn off could mean that if Rowan is able to pull together some knockouts quickly, keep pace in this matchup, try and get ahead, the prize penalty may not matter. Exactly. I think the two prize penalty just kind of balances out the fact that Reagan did not get a, a, a Lugia turn one, right? So it essentially gives him back mm -hmm. a turn here as we see another uh, capturing a moment, grabbing the Lugia V-Star. Do we have access to another? This has to be Tails. There it is. It is. So this Tails means the second Lugia can come down. I think I only saw one Archeops hit the discard pile, but in this matchup specifically, you can get away with just having one Archeops. We did see a Tyranitar in the discard pile. Wancho, tell us about how important Tyranitar is in this matchup specifically. <laughs> Tyranitar hit, hits hard and is dark. That's it. You, you, wanna, <laughs> you just want to attack with the Tyranitar with the second attack that does 240 damage. They hit knockout on a VMAX. You're taking three prizes per turn, and uh, that, that's key. Uh-oh here, Kragalange, two cards discard off the top. What are they? Power Tablet and Choice Belt. Those, Those are, are damage two modifiers. Mod damage modifiers. This Tyranitar is 230 HP. Okay. Means that two modifiers will be needed in order to take this knockout. Rowan does have this Lost Vacuum and an attachment on board. That means the Melodious Echo with four Fusion Strike energy. He's dealing a lot of damage. What are the two cards there? I didn't quite wow. get to see. I think one of them was a tablet. I think Boss's Order is Power Tablet, the two cards of choice here for Rowan. But, I mean, what do you do? You, you can, I guess, retreat to the other Mew, but it's all the same. Tyranitar will be doing enough damage if you leave us in the active. Or, of course, Lugia can even attack and take a knockout on Mew. You don't want to retreat into Genesect, because if you retreat into Genesect, that is the way that you're drawing cards. And what looked to be... It Not an excellent start for Rowan, but just a start that was better than Reagan's pretty terrible, just attaching a past start, and again, has ev backfired. Everything could be completely different here with the if he had just that one more Genesec, right? Mm -hmm. Get the train going. But yeah, it looks like, what was that? And we will just see the Psychic Leap, mm -hmm. 70 damage, Mute staying exactly where it is, staying put. This action goes back over to Reagan, does have access to Lugia V-Star. And it looks like Rowan just says, hey, with the double prize penalty, with you taking this two prize knockout, there's no way for me to win. A quick game one, a little slip up there from Rowan, just sort of not staying focused, not playing that switch, ends up costing him the game. Reagan going up 1-0, one game away from trying to run back Portland and get himself his first regional championship win. Yeah, you hate to see it. I think Rowan was in an absolutely great position there again with only an attach and a pass. Even the possibility of winning that turn, actually, if the draws were a little bit better, if uh, they did play the switch. But I'm sure Reagan just breathing a sigh of relief here again without by not dropping that Lugia. They might have been thinking already, you know what, it might be, it might be time to start thinking of game two, but you know what, uh, I'm sure they're happy to get that game. Now again, there's always the advantage both going first and second. I'm sure Rowan mm -hmm. wants to go first more so just because, of course, the deck can pop off going second. Yes, it can steal games by winning with Meloetta, but it's not a likely scenario. It's not something that happens 
80%. I would even go as confident to say 70% of games with this Meloetta deck or with the Meloetta version. However, going first is just a little bit better. You still play like Double Turbo does where you're looking for turn two knockouts with uh, a variety of your Pokemon that you have access to. And more additionally, you make it harder for Reagan to really get these Pokemon set up. You get the first attack pretty much guaranteed and put yourself in a solid position. So. Really interested to see how Rowan is able to set up as well as the prize cards. Burnett in the prizes. That's a piece Ooh. that makes it easy for Reagan to set up. A couple of stadiums in the prizes. Path of the Peak and Crystal Cave there. Mm -hmm. I think Path of the Peak actually is pretty big. Yeah, Path to the Peak is good in Rowan's list. He is playing the one copy. The problem is there's nothing like Judge to disrupt that early on. And I feel like if there's any time you want to play Path, you want to play it early on before opponent is able to utilize Summoning Star. And you see Rowan, just the body language is really signaling to me this hand is not solid. If you have Battle Pass, you slam that card down. If you have anything else, it looks like it's going to be a painful discard off this Ultra Ball, getting rid of Penny and Boss. But even if there's just a single Pokemon coming down, you need to have these opening explosive turns. You need to utilize those Battle Pass, or they're going to clog your hand up later and come back to bite you. Exactly. There's a, you know what? If there's a Fusion Strike system, there's a way. If you can somehow burn your hand down to at least no card, you can potentially draw two. There's still a chance you draw into those Battle VIPs, those Forest Seal Stones. So I don't. I won't count the turn over just yet mm. until we see the hand, but definitely not how you want to start this. You definitely want those battle VIP passes. Oh, wait, no, there, there's one. <laughs> Hiding from us here. The camera moved over a little bit. Let us take a peek as we see battle VIP pass come down. I think more so for Rowan, just getting rid of boss's orders on turn two. And even the Penny, a Penny's not as relevant in a matchup like this. It's great against things like Lost Box. It's great against decks that are trying to trap your Pokemon. We've seen the Mawile strategy to sort of trap a Pokemon in the active spot that can't attack. Things like that. Uh, but more so the boss's orders, I think, going down. And more so, uh, there's still a few cards left in Rowan's hand. Maybe things that can't be played, like those supporter cards on turn one. They start to clog the hand up. And this is what we talk about with this Fusion Strike build. When you're playing cards like Fusion Energy, like Alessa Sparkle, these cards, you can only play one of them per turn. It's not as easy to dig through your hand, discard all these pieces, and draw. That's one of the reasons people sort of start to, started to gravitate away from this Fusion Strike build, because it's a little bit less consistent. Definitely, especially since we we're in a world now without Quick Ball, a lot less uh, discard potential. Yeah, we've seen it in the past, oh, in this tournament, where uh, people have actually started depending on the loss of vacuum to really get cards out of the hand to start drawing. Uh, but right now, it looks like Rowan's drawing pretty healthily here. Does get the DTE onto the Mew V, a third gen. This is a, this is a good board. Beautiful this setup. is a Mew board. Things have worked out well. <laughs> Rowan's able to get that turn one energy drop. Has access to Choice Belt in hand, potentially, as well. Uh, could even just like retreat into the other Mew, but I think Rowan just has enough information uh, on Reagan's deck at this point. He's not playing. Reagan's not playing anything like Drapion V to take a knockout turn one onto Mew. So looking go. at Reagan's hand here, actually, he doesn't have much else. He did top deck into a Nest Ball, so should be able to get, at least get a second Lugia, which is definitely something you want to see. Does have the Capturing Aroma, could possibly get the uh, uh, get Tails here and get Laminion, which is possible. That there that might be the case, because, again, hand is not looking too good. Now, now that I'm thinking about the matchup a little bit more here, I was in my mind, I was thinking this is still a Mew, because I did see the Path of the Peak. I was expecting Path and Judge. That mm -hmm. is the key to beating Lugia. But since we're, again, Judges, uh, sorry, the Path is prize and no Judge, that means you're really just trading blows with this Lugia. And I'm starting to think you really have to depend on that Mellow Weta to at least take a two prize as well, because you're going to, your, your goal here is to attack possibly with Meloetta into a Mew into a Mew, right? You want to make sure you have three attackers because both these players, both these decks really hit hard. They can trade quite evenly, again, with Reagan's uh, two Tyranitars and the Lugia V-Stars. Yeah, these are big Pokemon. Big indeed. It's one of the ways you try to play that's a little bit differently. If, if you go second, you still get the first hit in with Meloetta, and if you go first, of course, you're attacking before your opponent does. Nest Ball being played. Looks like Luminion was grabbed off that Capturing Aroma, so supporter card of choice, but uh, again, Luminion's just a card in this matchup where it is a double-edged sword. Sure, you get setups. Sure, you get your supporter cards to draw cards, and sometimes it's necessary, but there's always that risk, right? It Ooh. has the same HP as something like Tapu Lele years ago, but the game has just gotten bigger and bigger in terms of Pokemon does have Ultra Ball, can get rid of a few resources. V-Guard Energy is playing three copies, so still having one in the hand. The last one being prized, though, could be a big deal down the line. 
As Professor's research is grabbed, we'll see at least one Archaeops in the discard pile, but because there's no Burnett, one more has to hit the discard pile if we're going to see a summoning star for two. Again, I mentioned earlier, uh, these players are going to be trading blows left and right, and the way to really get ahead of the game is to be able to take a blow. And one way Alugia really has the capability to do that is with those V-Guard energy. So seeing one in the discard pile definitely hurts, as, and, and one in the prize cards hurts as well, because right now this Lugia in the active has 250 HP. Mm -hmm. That means Rowan has to find some damage modifiers. Well, sorry, effectively 250 HP. So Rowan has to find some damage modifiers to take this knockout, at least a choice belt plus a power tablet potentially. And can you imagine a world where a Tyranitar also has a V-Guard energy and your Lugia V-Star has a V-Guard energy? I don't think there's enough firepower in Mew to be able to take those prizes very comfortably anyway, without having to depend on uh, gusting around it. But you know what? If there is a deck that can take those big knockouts, it is going to be the Meloetta style version of Mew, since it, it does cap out at 280 plus some tablets. Right. So capturing Roma, grabbing Tails, failing as well that way. I think this is a pretty interesting situation here. You could grab a basic Pokemon just to have it out of the deck to not draw into it, but I think with the way that the hand's looking for Reagan, just wants to have as little cards as possible. Looks like Serena, and you can only discard a maximum of three with that next turn. Smartly enough, off the Ultra Ball, grabbing that Archaeops can utilize Read the Wind, discard that card, draw three, get some more firepower. But again, Rowan may possibly be the first one to get hit into this, and a great supporter card to start mm. the turn off. Alessa Sparkle, two fusion energy in play. It means that if there's an energy drop this turn, another Alessa isn't even needed to get to that max 280 damage with four fusion strike energy in play. Yeah, Alessa Sparkle, such a powerful uh, energy acceleration supporter, able to accelerate two special energy, specifically those fusion strike energy, where we do see the third fusion strike energy drop. That means Melodious Echo is now doing 210 damage, which is just, uh, which is a huge amount and does not have the drawback of something like Technoblast where you can't attack the next turn. Big so. Heads Flip can find any card out of the deck with this Kramomatic. What were you looking for here? I mean, you pointed that out, 250 HP on the Slugia. Do you look for the modifiers or do you try to get aggressive with Meloetta here? I think you might, you definitely want some modifiers here. Uh, you, do, you already have that attack, 210. There's a Forest Seal Stone. It looks like they search for uh, whatever they want, really. <laughs> Again, it's a pretty good strategy, right? Yeah, Just you draw first, right? You, you draw first with those Genesect Vs, and then whatever you're missing, that's when we use the. Uh, that's when we use the tablets. Let's see how many cards. There's the choice spell. That means we're doing right. 240 damage. We just need one more damage modifier. And so I think the idea here from Rowan is, is kind of thinking ahead. What attackers are going to be used? What Pokemon are going to be used? And you pointed out a big one, Tyranitar. Okay, that has 230 HP. It's not too hard to knock out. You can knock this Lugia out with the Meloetta, and then that Luminion on the bench is looking primed mm -hmm. to be knocked out at some point during the game, as long as it's not removed off the board. UV Max coming into the active spot, one Fusion Strike system being used, of course, having that backup to get any card out of the, out of the deck with Forest Seal Stone, make it two Forest <laughs> Seal Stones at this point, drawing yep. more cards, and here we go. Meloetta seeing some action on the stage. It feels like it's been a while. Oh, that's there right. V Guard Energy only uh, protects you from it's damage only from v Pokemon, Pokemon V. Yeah. Yep. I feel like every time I see it, I'm like, oh, so it reduces damage if it's attached to a V. But no, it reduces <laughs> their 30 damage from all V Pokemon. So just needing one modifier, saving the power tablets for later, taking the knockout as Single Strike Ev Evil Tall comes down into play. That is a card that loves to see action in this Mew matchup. All right, that's a great attacker in this matchup. That's another way to really skew the prize race here. Again, force Roland to the odd prize race, because then you, you are depending on Pokemon Vs, like the Lugia Vs, the Tyranitar Vs, but if you can mix in a single strike, uh, sorry, a single prize Pokemon, just like what Rowan's doing here, you could possibly trade a little bit more evenly because you definitely, you're, you're forcing four KOs here versus, you know, when you're attacking into Rowan's Mew VMAX, mm. Mew VMAXs do give three prizes, so it's still going to be three knockouts. It's always so weird for me to see this card see play. I mean, you look at the, the text on this card, there is no text <laughs> besides the attacks, uh, beside the attack text, right? It has two attacks, it just deals damage, and there's no text on the card, but it's just for the sole fact that when you boost the damage with single strike energy, you hit 170 damage, 
And you're a dark type. Being dark is a great type to have right now in the Pokemon TCG. What do we find here? Finds capturing Aroma. Will this flip heads? No, it's a Tails flip. There's no Lugia V-Star. Reagan cannot keep up with the amount of pressure Rowan has put on with this Meloetta. We're going to game two. One game apiece here for both these players. And I just have to say, again, you can tell really that these players are just masters of their deck, right? It's 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 sort of like it's sort of like chess when you can start seeing the pieces start to to fall into place. You can you can tell you know what? There's no way out for me. This is uh, I'm I'm thinking three turns in the future. There's no way I can win. Let's go into the game three. I think I have a better chance going first. Let's do that. So we've seen a sort of weird set where something goes wrong in the early setup for both players. That game, Reagan wasn't able to find Lugia V-Star. Game one, Rowan wasn't able to get set up, get these attackers set up. Going into game three, assuming things play out, who do you see as the MVP card for both Rowan and Reagan to get prioritized <laughs> and get set up as quickly as possible? Again, it's just a matter of, it's a matter of setup, right? For Reagan, I think, for the Lugia V-Star decks in general, if, if Lugia V-Star sets up 100% of the time, I have, I have no questions down for me. That's the best deck in format. Like, just like it was in the past. <laughs> but right now, again, we're depending on capturing Aromas, Mesa Goza to get those key cards. And uh, it's a lot harder to discard the cards for sure. So again, set up. So I'm going to say key card would have to be Laminion. Because Laminion has access to get you supporters, to get you those Burnets versus... And for me, it's going to be the Battle VIP at the very start. And let's see, you have to be explosive here. You want to be attacking with that Meloetta. Put in that pressure. Turn one. And that's something I do want to see. Power tablet and the prizes, not something you always want to see, but besides that pretty team, I mean, it's like any deck. You want to have all 60 cards in your deck. You've got to make some sacrifices when the prize cards come out. As Reagan did take a mulligan. So one more card here for Rowan on that powerful going first. <laughs> or going second, first turn, make that two mulligans. Oh, and again, no. the more cards Rowan has to work with, the more likely it is we see a turn one Deoxys attack. We see a turn one Meloetta, Melodious Echo for 210 plus damage. You don't want to be giving these cards, but there's nothing Reagan can do. You're just asking your deck, please give me a good hand. Give me basic Pokemon. I do not want to help my opponent out any more than I am already. Exactly, I think. Yeah, you def. If, if there's a if there's a deck you don't want to give extra cards to is Meloetta, turn one attacking Mew, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you're just giving it more pieces. Uh, you never know. One of those two cards might have been the exact piece they needed. Let's see. If, uh, let's see if Reagan can finally draw into a basic and hopefully not something like the Laminion start. <laughs> let's give him a basic that actually works here, and Evil Tal might be a very good one right there. I think Reagan will be going first. Let's take a look at these prize cards here. Reagan has got to find a Lugia V to start this game off. Here we go. Game number three, top four here. The Hartford Regional Championships. Is there a Lugia in this hand? I think we're flipping. If Meza goes and flips Tails, there's no basic Pokemon. Oh. Flipping Tails. There's no Lugia V in this hand at all. You can bench Tyranitar to prevent yourself from losing. But you want both of these attackers in this matchup regardless. You've that. now essentially not only gone second, but you now give your opponent the opportunity to take the first prizes against you as well. That's what I've been saying, Ethan. If Lugia can set up 100% of the time, it's the best deck in format. And that's but... just insult to injury, say, <laughs> yeah, you found nothing off that. I'm going to get a free Pokemon out of my deck by flipping heads off Mezagoza. Oof, let's see if uh, Rowan can really set up that turn one Meloetta. Looks like they are <laughs> eyeing it out there. It's put, it's, it's going in front. Looking at the hand, the hand is absolutely beautiful. I saw, I think I saw Battle VIP pass. Yep. You have Cram Omatics, the Forest Seal Stone. Ooh, things are scary here for Reagan. Lots of options, of course. Flipping heads with cram Sometimes what I like to do is just play cram if I know the card I'm going to discard, just because the more options you have off of these cards that can search anything out, the better choices that you have. Uh-oh. Uh, well, let's, right. uh, okay. <laughs> come on. <laughs> That's not how that works. All right. <laughs> Mezagoza cannot find any card. It is just Pokeball on a stadium. I, I think I think Rowan heard you there talking about Cramomatic because that's exactly what Cramomatic does. You can he's, flip a card. He's putting the energy out there, right? He's saying, come on. I want a lesson sparkle this turn. Give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> exactly. As we see, Battle VIP pass again. Very powerful card going first. Let's see what they decide to set up. Again, it's going to be a couple, I, if I had to guess, a couple of Genesects, a couple of Mews. Let's, let's get some draws going in. Uh, there's the Meloet again, very powerful card. So optimally here, 
course, escape rope is also an option. If you can get mm -hmm. a, find a way to knock out that Tyranitar, not only are you taking the first prizes, but you're taking three prizes on top of everything. I wouldn't mind taking knockout on the Evil Tal as opposed mm -hmm. to the Tyranitar. Technically, the Evil Tal can attack this next turn and take a knockout on That's the true. Meloetta. That's true. Deoxys, of course, with that photon boost attack. Able to deal 160 damage if there is a single strike energy, or rather not a single strike energy, it does have a single strike Pokemon <laughs> attacks, but uh, it feels like all the different types have finally come back after years. I remember that set being released a mm -hmm. while back. Fusion strike energy allows it to deal 160 damage. So here we go, some big fusion strike systems. Do we see Alessa Sparkle? I mean, Another battle VIP pass. Doesn't even need it. Said, hey, I'm going to cram it away. Flips heads. This can grab Sparkle out of the deck. Are you kidding me? What a strong setup here for Rowan. I mean, they had it either way. They do have the Forest Seal Stone, but having to having the capability to save the Forest Seal Stone for a little bit later down the line, this is so intimidating right now. That Deoxys doing 160 damage, just more than enough to take a knockout on that Evil Tot. And then the Meloetta is threatening 280 the next turn. Has the Mew as well, so Mew VMAX is a, pops, a possibility the following turn. Fusion Strike System finds Fusion Energy for the following turn. More Forest Seal Stones. <laughs> this is textbook Fusion Mew setup right here for Rowan. 140 damage with Deoxys. Photon Boost in top four. Able to take the knockout on to this Yufeltal. Rowan taking first prizes. Reagan does not have much of a response right now, not only in this hand, but also turn this turn. turn. Again, Ultra Ball can find them the Lugia V, and they also have the research, so they're not out of it just yet. They should be able to set up here, but the amount of pressure right now coming from the Mew deck, it's, it's intimidating. Mm -hmm. Again, 280 turn two, no damage modifiers needed. I just have to attach and use Alexis, Alexis Sparkle, potentially. But again, let's see how Regan responds here. They, they need, obviously, they need to find a Lugia. It looks like they're grabbing the... Archaeops instead, very interesting. I really? think, yeah, so there's research in hand. So I think what Reagan understands at this point is, listen, I've got to play risky at this point, right? My opponent took the first prize mm -hmm. cards against me. I don't have a lot going for me. I know I lose this game if I can't get both of my Archaeops out. Let me just not have to worry about that. I've got to play risky. I'm behind. I've got to take some chances. I've got to get lucky to stay in this match. So these will be a big seven cards here off Professor's Research. Whoa. Do we see a Lugia? Oh, come on. Are we flipping <laughs> for this again? What is it? If it's if it's heads, you don't get a Lugia it's a V. It's heads, and he can't find Lugia V. It backfires, and Rowan Stavanaugh is advancing to the finals here at the Hartford Regional Championships. I don't think I've seen so many dice really determine a winner for a top four, but Rowan Stavanaugh, again, absolutely amazing plays, absolutely intimidating deck, and again, it looks really fun to play. Can't wait to try it out. <laughs> That's what you sign up for when you play Lugia. You should have a contract that you sign at the bottom that says, hey, I know I'm flipping coins to stay in this game. It's part of how you have to play the deck now. We lost key pieces. Quick Ball, Evolution, and Sense. These are cards that made it a lot easier to set up. Now, a lot of the times, you're relying off things like Professor Burnett, flipping heads or tails off Capturing Aroma. These things are a lot less consistent than they have been in the past before when we had those pieces. But like you said, when the deck gets